In this video, we're gonna learn all about adding text to moving footage inside of DaVinci Resolve. And I'm gonna share with you some essential tips, a lot of stuff that you wouldn't know unless you've done a bunch of these. It's gonna save you time and energy and just make your life a lot better, shall we? Here we are in DaVinci Resolve 20 and I have a few different shots here. You can download these down below or up there. And you can follow along with me and try your hand at all of these things. These are just some things we shot around the shop, including this shot of our very dirty floor. <laughs> but let's explore some cool ways to add text to these for maybe some exciting titles or graphics. Of course, you could put some text over it just using the titles in DaVinci Resolve like this, right? You just take some text, put that in, right? But you know, that's not, that's not that cool. What if we want the text to stick to things and move with the camera? Well, in that case, we're gonna have to jump into Fusion. Let's actually start with this one, a shot of this light. And let's say we wanna make a little call out thing that's like, you know, some light. And as we play this back, that title kind of sticks to the light. All we have to do is just be looking at it here in the edit page and then switch over to the Fusion page. And the main thing we're gonna do here is motion track it. So we're just gonna add a regular tracker node. I'm gonna select this media in one, which is our original footage, and I'll hit shift spacebar. Type in tracker and hit enter, and that should connect it just like this. That's gonna give us this little IntelliTrack one thing right here. I'm gonna to move to one side of the clip or the other, just because it's a little bit easier to get a smooth track if you start on one side or the other. You could certainly start in the middle if you need to, but it's less problematic if you start at the end. So we'll just start at frame 99. And I'm gonna put this over something that is high contrast and unique. So maybe the end of this little logo, sure. And then let's track this backwards. There we go. And that's going to follow that motion throughout the clip, just like that. And now I have this tracked and I can put in my text. So let's just take a text plus node like this and we'll call this uh, SL100. And we'll just plug this into the tracker like that. Make sure we're looking at our media out. And we need to select the tracker and go up to operation and under operation here, let's say match move. That's going to turn this tracker into sort of a merge so that we have our text over it, which will put it over the video. And I can select my text and put this wherever I want, like maybe put it up here, and that should kind of stick to that light. It's gonna move back and forth with the light. Now, what if we want a little pointer thing? Well, we can make that a bunch of different ways. I'll just grab this background node here, drag this down, and let's make the background white just by sliding all these sliders up. Now disconnect my text and take the output of the text and drop that on the output of this background. That'll make a merge node. I can take the output of the merge node and put that into the green input of the tracker. That'll make a white background. So we're gonna mask this background just by taking a polygon mask, plugging that into the blue input. And I'm just gonna put a dot right here by my text and right here where I want it to attach to the light. That'll make a little line. I'll push up the border width just a little bit, something like that. And now, Look at this, oh baby, we have a little call out there. Isn't that cool? That's fun. Of course we can change the font or whatever we wanna to do to obviously Poppins, the best font in the world. Look at that subtle off-white coloring. A tasteful thickness of it. Oh my God. There's our, there's our little call out, that's nice. So that's one thing you can do, just use a tracker, make some kind of little graphic that you want to track to it and run it through this tracker node with that operation match move. Let's get a little bit more wild here. This shot three, let's go into Fusion here. Let's say we wanna add some text here that feels like it's kind of floating in 3D space. Now, I'm gonna show you in a few minutes how to actually track this in 3D space and put real 3D text in there. But you don't always need to do that if you want something to kind of feel like it's in that space. A lot of the time you can actually get away with a planar track, which is a 2D tracker. This is something that I tell our students at Ground Control all the time is that you probably don't need to do a 3D track. And sometimes they don't believe me, but it do be like that. They don't think it be like it is, but it do. It do be like that. We're gonna select media in one, shift spacebar, P-L-A-N-A-R, and we're gonna bring up planar tracker. I'm gonna scrub through this a little bit and I'm gonna find something that I wanna kind of stick this to. And I think I want this text to be right here, kind of in between these two trees. And with this planar tracker, I'm just going to make a shape like this and just kind of focus on one depth of the scene like this. You could also do this with the regular tracker, but it's just faster with the planar tracker like this. So I'm just making this little shape around these trees. And the one thing I'm gonna do is go to motion type instead of perspective, I'm just gonna go to translation, rotation, and scale. 
That's going to not worry about kind of skewing things. We'll actually get to that in a second. We're just kind of capturing the main movement of this patch of the video. So there's our shape. I'm going to go up to here where it says set, click set, and then I'm going to track this backwards like that. So that's going to make a bunch of little tracking markers everywhere, and it's going to kind of average them out. And so it's tracked all the way through this shot, a couple hundred little tracking markers. And now we can take this main movement that's kind of scaling and rotating and kind of moving, and we're going to apply that to some text kind of like we did in the previous shot. So let's grab some text, this third icon over, we'll just grab this text here and we'll just say uh, orchard. Okay, cool, orchard, let's make it Poppins, the best font ever, size it up. And this time, instead of running it through that tracker, I'm actually just going to merge it over. So I can take a merge node, put this into the foreground like this. And so far, it's not working because I just have it merged over. But I can select my planar tracker and go here to where it says create planar transform. When I click that, that's going to add a new node. And this node is going to have all of the tracking information in it. It's a transform node that moves things to stick to this little area that we tracked. So all I have to do is run this text through that transform node like this. And then that text will stick to that place. Isn't that cool? So easy. And so now we have this kind of pseudo 3D tracked looking shot without much trouble at all. We just track this in 2D and then I can move this text or change the size or whatever I want to do. And it looks like we spent a lot of time on it, but we didn't. All right. Isn't that cool? This kind of tracking with the planar tracker and just capturing the translation, rotation and scale. This works for match moving text onto, I mean, 80% of shots. You can usually get something like this to work. Let's switch back over. Let's actually go to the first shot in my timeline. This one is going to be planar tracker, but with some perspective on it. Let's say that we want to put some text on the ground and we want to want to make it seem like the text is actually kind of painted on the pavement here. Let's switch into fusion. And we're going to do a similar thing. I'm going to scrub through this shot and I'm going to figure out kind of how the camera moves. And I think again, I'm going to start at the end of the shot because I want to be able to see all of the subject that I'm going to track. I'm going to put this on this floor and I don't want to start here because I'm missing half the data for the floor. So let's start back here and shift spacebar, planar tracker, and let's just select all of the floor here. This is the good thing about having a dirty floor is that it makes it really easy to track because there's lots of little spots and everything that are high contrast that you can track. But I just have this right here. And this time I'm gonna leave this as perspective. I'm gonna set my reference time and track this backwards. And that should grab onto it pretty well because there's so many little spots. If you're gonna track something, never clean it. <laughs> so there we go, we have a really nice track on this floor. And from here we have a couple of options. One thing we could do would be to go to this operation mode and switch this to corner pin. And what that's going to do is give us this little rhombus thing or whatever it's called. And we can put our corners kind of down in perspective, pretending like we had a big piece of paper and we were just kind of laying it down on the ground. The other thing that we could do would be just to leave this on track and just say create planar transform. And we could run something through that planar transform and then do that corner pin separately, which is the way that I like to do it, just because I like to have the planar transform so that I could turn it off and on and copy it and all that stuff. So I'll actually get rid of the planar tracker. We're going to merge this planar transform over everything and we'll take some text. We'll just say text really big, size it up, put it through this planar transform like this. But we need to put this down in perspective. So let's before the planar transform, shift spacebar type corner. And this is going to give us a similar little widget here. And we're going to stretch out the corners here to be in perspective. And the nice thing about having these straight lines here is it's really easy to figure out the perspective. If you don't have straight lines, you kind of have to guess. But yeah, something like that, that looks pretty good. From here, we can switch to Poppins, the best font ever, and then we can size this up a little bit, maybe even more. Oh boy, he's getting crazy. All right, let's take this text down a little bit. Yeah, something like that. And now the magic happens. Check this out, this is magic. Zoom in so you can see it here. We'll just play this back. Look at that. That text sticks in perspective. Isn't that cool? The reason this works is because at our key frame, the very first frame that we kind of tracked it from, this planar transform isn't going to warp it at all. So what we do is we warp this perfectly to fit in perspective. And then when this planar transform warps it throughout the shot, it warps that already warped footage and it ends up looking correct. 
Isn't that cool? So there's our text. That's awesome. Let's even do a little trick. I want to show you a trick to make this look more like it's painted on the ground. We're going to take an effect called brightness and contrast. That's this little sunshine thing. Let's take our media in one into brightness and contrast. I'll just drag this up so we can see what's going on here. So we're just taking our original footage and I'm going to desaturate it. And I'm going to push this high amount down and the low amount up. That's going to make this a really, really high contrast image. I'm also going to clip black and clip white because what I'm wanting to do is keep the dark parts and kind of crush out most of the floor so that we have just a little bit of gray here. The reason I want to do that is because I want our text to appear on the floor just where this is white and not appear where it's black. So it's kind of going to cut it out. The way that we do that is by connecting this brightness and contrast to the mask input of this merge. That's going to tell this merge to use this brightness and contrast as a mask for what it's doing. And what a merge does is put a foreground over a background. So it's going to put this text over this background, but it's only going to do it where the mask says. By default, this blue input is an alpha mask. So if I were to look at the alpha channel of this brightness and contrast just by hitting A, everything's white. That means that the merge is going to do its job everywhere. That's different than something like a ellipse mask where the alpha channel looks like this, where it's white inside of the circle and black outside, in which case this merge would really only do its job inside of the circle. And so I could make the circle smaller like that, right? But instead of using the alpha, the transparency of this, I'm actually going to use the black and white information. So I'm going to select the merge, go over to settings, and here where it says channel alpha, this is what it's using for the mask. Instead of alpha, we're going to go to luminance and check this out. Look at this magic. It kind of eats this away a little bit. And as this gets closer to that crack, it kind of cuts that crack out. Oh, baby. And we can adjust this brightness and contrast. I'll bring this up in the first viewer here. And as I adjust the contrast here, I can eat away more or less of this text. Look at this. Isn't that cool? And that can really make this look like it's on the floor. Doesn't that look great? And because all we're doing is color correcting this exact footage, it actually works perfectly to texturize that text. Isn't that cool? I love stuff like this, man. We do a similar thing in our intro to fusion course where we learn all about how all this stuff works. So if this is all brand new to you, definitely check that out. That's at groundcontrol.film. I'll put a link at the end of the video. I want to show you one more cool thing. So this fourth shot, let's actually get crazy. Let's, let's do a real 3D track on this. Like I said, you don't have to do this all the time, but it is really cool if you put in the work to do it. And this shot itself is actually going to be pretty darn easy. So let's switch over to fusion. We're going to start with a camera tracker, camera tracker. So this is a effect that's only available in the paid version of Resolve. That's Resolve Studio, okay? Because it does some fancy stuff. So there's a lot that's available in the free version, but this is one of those things, one of the few things that is only available in the paid version. So we can select this camera tracker and here's what we do. It doesn't always work this way. It can sometimes be more complicated, but this shot is pretty easy. And so all we have to do is click auto track like this. And that's going to go through and it's going to find all these little features and it's going to track them. Then we can switch over to solve and let's apply the selection filters. That's going to select all of the tracks that aren't that great. And then I'm just going to hit delete like that. From here, I'm going to click solve and it's going to give us an average solve error. The idea is you want this less than 0.5 pixels, okay? Because that means that it's figured out what this 3D scene looks like and it's going to do a good job tracking it, all right? We're going to switch over to export and go down to 3D scene transform. We're going to switch from aligned to unaligned. And now we're going to align our 3D scene. So I'm going to select a bunch of points that are on the ground like this and go to this second orientation right here and just say set from selection. And then I'm going to pick kind of the middle of our scene, maybe like right here. That's going to be our origin. That's going to be the center of our 3D world. With that selected, I'll go over and say set from selection like this. And once I have both of those set, I'll switch from unaligned to aligned like that. Okay, nothing seems to happen. But now when I hit export, it's going to make some 3D nodes, and this is where things get really cool. If I view this Merge 3D, look at this. What this has done is it's made a 3D scene and recreated the movement of the camera in 3D. So check this out as this plays back. This is what the camera was doing in real life. And all these little points, these are the tracking points in the 3D world. And so it's actually recreated this 3D world for us. Isn't that cool? And so now we can take some text Actually, let's take some 3D text, this third icon right here, and plug this into our Merge 3D. And we'll just say 3D text like that. 
that's going to put that where we set that origin. So that's going to be wherever we decided it was, which I believe was right on the edge of that road. And let's look at this renderer. There we go. And now if we play this back, it's match moved. It's, it's there in actual 3D space. Now, we can make this look even cooler by adding some actual 3D stuff to this. So one thing I'll do is get rid of our point cloud and our ground plane, like that. I'm going to take our text, and let's go down to extrusion right here. Push up extrusion depth, bevel depth, and bevel width just a little bit. We're going to switch to our renderer and make sure we enable lighting and shadows. That's going to turn our text black because we don't have any lights in our scene. To add more stuff to our scene, we need to connect it to this Merge 3D. So let's grab a light. I'm just going to actually double click off this and hit shift space bar and type 3DL. That's going to bring up directional light. I'll hit add and put that in like this. That's going to add a directional light here to our scene. And if we look at our Merge 3D here on the left, we can change the direction of our light by going over to our transform with our directional light selected. Go to our rotation and we'll just rotate this to kind of roughly match the lighting in our plate. We have the sun kind of coming from this way. That's good. Yeah, let's do something like that. That's beautiful. And then let's also take this text 3D and I want to take the size down a little bit. And we're going to go to our transform and we're going to move it up a little bit and then back just a touch. So this should look like it's floating in the air. Yes. Isn't that awesome? So yeah, you can add 3D text. Like I said, it's not always this easy, but if you have a shot with some simpler movement and lots of little places to track, you can usually follow something like this and get a pretty good result for matching your 3D text. If you want to download these shots and follow along, there's the link right there. If you want to learn more about Fusion, whoosh, Intro to Fusion is where you want to be. That's our course. It's available now, and I'm really glad that you're here. I hope that you can make cool text now and stick it to stuff. You can stick to the text. That's what I want, and that's what we should all want in life. 